Hey everybody, um, welcome to another video. This is not an Emacs video. Um, I thought I would do a little mini series on something else that I'm excited about right now. Um, and hopefully some people will like it, probably a little bit of a different audience, but that's okay. Um, so what I wanna talk about a little bit is a GitHub Classroom. And I've been a big fan of GitHub for a long time. I'm gonna just go over my, let's just go to the scratch buffer here. Uh, where's no scratch? Ah, we'll create a new one, okay. Um, and I've been using, you know, I use Git, uh, GitHub for all my stuff and um, for my classes, but, you know, I, I started way back when, you know, I, I used version control in the very primitive days of like, like, I think RCCS or SCS way back when, or even before that, um, I used something, um, when I used, um, blah, 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 VMS, it actually had um, versioning in the file system, which was kind of cool to a point. But I used CVS with my classes, and that was self-hosted. And then SVN came around, and I used that. Um, and then after that, we went to, um, and uh, that went um, also self-hosted. Uh, then I think for a while, I went to Mercurial with my classes, and then finally to Git. Um, and for a while in here, somewhere on this Mercurial side, I used uh, Google's code repository when they had that uh, but then shortly after I switched over to git and then started using github and I've been using it ever since and a few years ago github came out with github classroom and github classroom is very cool um, and it, it does two things really really well um, one is it lets you set up and communicate out assignments to uh, your students really nicely and then the second thing is it allows you to manage repositories um, and and I hadn't gone in whole hog with GitHub Classroom originally. I, I mean, I would look at it and whatever. Um, and that's because my workflow was pretty well set up with just, you know, GitHub. Um, you know, I had my script set up. I had everything I've done set up. Um, and um, when when GitHub Classroom first came out, it was a little bit more primitive. Um, but, you know, they keep making these great improvements, and I'm going in whole hog this year with my classes. So I thought I'd show you some of the things that I, I do with it. Uh, but today, I'm actually not going to look at GitHub Classroom. Um, I'm going to look at a side tool that I use with it. Um, a nice thing about GitHub Classroom is it's very lightweight um, in that it does the Basically, it does the repo management, it does the communication of the projects, but it doesn't do all sorts of other things. It doesn't, it's not a content management system, even though you do have your GitHub repos, which can serve your GitHub pages, which can have the wiki, so you kind of have that avail available to you if you want. It's just not integrated into the classroom, so you have much more flexibility. It doesn't have a, an auto grader built in, um, and that's also a good thing because then you're not restricted to one particular auto grader. And I'll talk about auto grading in the later on um, episodes of the, this mini series, maybe two or three videos. Um, and it also doesn't have um, testing built in, um, but that also gives you freedom because it, it, it really, um, it lets you use tools that work for you. Um, and one tool though that it does have support with is uh, Travis CI for continuous integration. And so I thought I'd show you a little bit about Travis CI um, just as a regular user. And then in the next video, when we step you through GitHub Classroom and creating an account and all of that, I can show you how we use it with a class. Um, so today we're going to focus on that that Travis side. So Travis basically it, it's this um, continuous integration thing and um, the idea is whenever you whenever you push something up to to your repo, whenever you push up to GitHub, it's automatically going to run something. It's automatically going to run, uh, usually it will be a series of tests or something, um, but it really could be almost anything. Um, so there's travisci.org and travisci.com. CI.com is the commercial one. Um, CI.org is the for open source stuff. You can do things for open source for free, um, and then they charge after a trial period for the commercial commercial stuff and um, I did have to send them put in a, a ticket um, so that I could use private repos with my classes but you know they responded in like 20 minutes and 
took care of everything. So, you know, the Travis people were really helpful and really good with it. It was really painless. Um, but anyway, let me show you what's up with this. So the first thing is um, I've got GitHub here. I've got this repo and this is just a little C++ repo, um, but I'll talk a little bit about doing it with other languages as well. And um, you have to link GitHub to Travis. So I'm going to sign in with GitHub here. And um, I'm already logged in now with my regular GitHub account. Uh, and you can do this under the com as well. Um, and the com interface looks a little bit cooler. But you'll notice here I've got um, various repos that I have under my account. And this, again, is not my regular account. It's just a little test account that I set up under GitHub for students and stuff. But what you'll want to do originally is you'll want to go to settings. You'll want to sync the account. Um, and then these would all be grayed, and I clicked on yes for the ones that I want to actually test here. Uh, and, and it was, it was a little, little bit neater, it was a little bit cleaner here um, on the comm side. On the comm side, um, I think there was an option somewhere to just do everything, um, you know, just to do all of the... Um, all of the repos automatically or select them but um, you know again if you just check the ones you want that'll be great but then it's really easy to use so um so let me show you so here I'm in this repo and this repo is um, is this ah didn't mean to go there uh, oh I hit I, right. Um, is this repo um, and it's a little C++ thing and so there's um, a make file uh, main.cpp uh, which actually I don't think has anything in it um, you know just a little test there um, but I'm using something called um, catch tests I've also used doc test and this is an include file only testing framework and it lets me make tests that look like this and you'll see here that I've got um, a test that's invalid here in fact 2 equals 20 that's that's intentional um, and in my make file, I just you know build and everything. Uh, so let's actually edit a file, and I'm going to go back to my tests, and let, let's change this bad test to make it, you know, a different bad test, and we'll do a git commit uh, change the bad test. And I have to put in my username and password because this is not my regular account so I don't have the SSH keys set up and all of that but now if I come over here to Travis um, somewhere here I'll poke around here right, let me get rid of this extra window um, and that's actually this TCI test and um, this is the old one that it was running um, and it should, within a couple of minutes, or hopefully less than that, um, it should start a new build, and it should be a build. Let me click back over here to my repo. Make sure that it uploaded the correct, you know, I got committed and pushed everything, and that was in tests.cpp. Yep, so there's my invalid test. Um, Let's remove. Eh, I don't want to move the box. Forget it. Uh, let's let's see where we're at here. Uh, oh, running one one. So it's actually running this still. So let's click on here, and it's actually running this. And I'll show you how this is controlled. And um, it's booting up a virtual machine, and it's actually now testing my project. So while this is going, because this could take a minute, let me show you how this is controlled. It's controlled by a single file in the repo. And it's this one, .travis.yml, so it's, it'll be hidden in the directory. And it's just a little um, YML file, a little markup file, um, the uh, YAML markup, whatever, YAML file. And so it's just, my language is CPP. I'm using the Clang compiler, so it's, uh, I, could also com I could also provide um, a CPP, rather GCC for this G++. And my script, I guess it'll first run make, which I could get rid of, but then it runs make tests and then dot slash test. So it's exactly as if I go make, make, make tests. And this will take a second. And dot slash test, and then notice that this fails. Let's see if this run has finished yet. 
Um, and there we have it, the same thing. It's failed with fact 2 equals 200, but that happens every time you push this. And it's just controlled by that YAML file, um, and it's set up to, you know, to run whatever you want. So now if I want to fix this, all I have to do is, let's say I fix my code, um, so now my test works, and I'm going to uh, commit, and I fixed the test, git push. And what we'll see, and um, now we're running, or we're going to be running, this test again, but this time it's going to pass. If I go here, um, notice, nine, um, where was this, where was this? Uh, finished about a minute ago, this was the test that failed. And now this is going to run, this one is going to run, and then it's going to ultimately succeed. And then we'll have here that another, there's going to be a green one on top of this with a check. Um, so this basically lets you every time, there we go, we're starting to run this. Every single time you push to um, up to your repo, you're automatically going to get these tests. You're also, let me see if this worked off window. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm off window here, but... Um, you're also supposed to get an email for this, which I'm not getting on this account, but I am getting it on um, when I use my regular account with Travis. So I have to look into this a little bit. But anyway, here we see that all the tests passed and we're done. But we can also do this in other languages and in other situations. So let's say we're in here and let's say you're running a class in Python. We can, uh, let's create a little Python program. Let's say, um, Python demo and let's call it hello.py and we will say print hello and you know I know this doesn't work um, and I know I'm not running my EPC server but that's why uh, that's because I reinstalled Emacs before Jedi install server don't worry about that uh, but here if I run Python 3 hello it's not going to work of course but let's edit uh, Travis.yml and let's come down here to Travis. Let's go back to my dashboard. Let's bring up the documentation and we're going to look here, um, let's see, programming languages. And it supports tons of programming languages. And what it basically is doing is it's building you a container um, and it's running in a little environment, whatever you want to run. So we're going to make this, we're going to take this, we're going to copy this over, the, the minimum run, and we're going to run 3.6. But instead of running the script, we're going to run python dot slash hello dot pi. That's going to be our, um, the way we test our program. So now what we're going to do is we're going to git add Travis YAML, and that'll be that. Let's go to our hello.py, let's save that. Let us git add hello.py. And if we run Python or Python 3 hello.py, it's not gonna work, that's an error. Um, so let's uh, git commit added some stuff, git push. And let's go back to Travis. Let's look at our repositories. Let's go to our dashboard. Um, Python demo uh, over here. And it should automatically build, but, well, let's see, we're running. Are we running? There we go. Python demo is running. Let's take a look at this. And we're going to let this go for a minute. Um, I know it's a little bit slow. You know, it's going to take a little bit of time. But it's now running that line, that script. And while that's running, this could be anything. Um, this could be multiple lines running. You know, it could run a little test suite. It could run the program. The only thing is that what it's going to do is it's going to, whenever you run the, your script, it's going to return a code. And in this case, the Python program itself returns a one, which is an error code, and that's triggering that that's no good. So let's change our program. Let's change this to this. So that's a valid Python program. Let's commit and push. And that goes up. And we should get another run in a minute. 
here. Uh, and meanwhile, while we're waiting for that to run, let's look also, you know, we can also do this in Java. And so if you look at Java, we'll make this font a little bit bigger. The language is Java. Um, You know, you can say which JDK you want to use for which version, etc. Um, so are we running again? Uh, that's still the previous one. Okay, that was the previous one that was running. So this is the one that's currently running, so we're still going. And the same thing with Python. We can decide Python 3.6, Python 2 something, etc., etc. But the cool thing here is every time you push, it's going to run. So again, while we're waiting for this to run, Let's go back to the C++ repo that I used. So the cool thing here is what I can do with my students is if I give them, I can give them a test file with test cases and I can give them in the C++ case things to automatically run, you know, like, um, and I can make my YAML file run the tests. Even if they don't do it, they can go to their Travis, um, their Travis website, and they'll see, like in this case, oh, look, it exited with zero, it's green, it's good. They'll be able to see that, oh, it passes the tests. Now, of course, they could just do it from within their repo here, but it's kind of a sanity check for them um, in that it enables them to know, okay, I pushed it up, and after it was pushed, it ran and it worked. So now they know that what they submitted is at least good in terms of passing those tests. The other nice thing, is from my point of view as an instructor, and I'll show you this in the future parts of the videos when, when I, get I get to the, the GitHub, GitHub classroom, classroom, you know, I'll, I'll see all the student repos down the line over here, and I'll see check, 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 knowing which ones have passed all the tests. So that's Travis, um, Travis CI for continuous integration. I just know the very basics of this, but as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. You just log in, you enable some repositories, you know, you check out, click off on, you want to follow them. Uh, another thing you can do is you can restart the build here. You know, there's a menu option to manually start builds. Um, you know, if we go back to the dashboard here, we'll, you know, we can click on any of these and, oops trigger a build manually and stuff. Uh, you can uh, do setting, uh, do settings so you can, um, there, well, anyway, you can look at all of these um, to set things up. Um, if you're doing this for real development, you can do things like build, you know, do run the, run this script, run the Travis script on different branches, run it on everything, run, really powerful, really flexible. But for just this basic, give the students some feedback every time they push, um, very cool, very lightweight. Um, I like it a lot. So that's all we're going to start do for today. So we're almost at 20 minutes, which is, um, you know, kind of long for the videos I've been doing. But what we're going to do is I'm going to make another video a little bit later, which is going to show how I set up a, a project um, for GitHub Classroom and then how I use it. Um, that's going to probably be with C++ because that's what I'm doing with my classes now. But you can see that all you really have to do if you want to do this with Java, if you want to do this with Python, is you just have to use a different dot Travis YAML file um, and both Python and Java have a lot of testing options for you. If you're doing with Python, you can use PyUnit, you can use built-in doc tests, a um, lot of really great options. So that's it for Travis. That's, um, uh, that's the first in this series. I hope you find it useful or interesting and um, you, you know, you, um, you're seeing a tool that maybe you didn't know about before. And we'll follow this up with GitHub Classroom probably in a couple of days. I hope. All right. Thanks a lot. Enjoy.